I would say majority of the mistakes that are done with media uh, is actually a labeling issue. Uh, not so much a, I've put it into my system and I accidentally delete it. It's more so we have two cards in your hand that look identical. Which one's which? And I've just pulled one out of my pocket, but I forgot to label the one I just pulled out of the, the camera. So that is where majority of the mistakes happen. Sometimes, sometimes it's happening at the reader level, which is harder to defend against, if you will. But I would say the probably the first best practice uh, that I do, for example, at, during my prep day, is I go and I put a blank label on every single Mac. And if they're pro, or if they're an S by S card, for example, then. Um, I will actually have two, maybe two bags, all right? And um, some shows, that some want me to do all the data management, me handle the cards. I think as few of as few people as possible in, in that chain uh, is going to be the best because then it, one person's accountable, one person knows what happens, one person it's there, it's not three people, which is another problem. Um, is you know you have your first and then you have your second and then you have your DIT or who might be the data manager as well, like especially on commercials, for example. Um, I like to just do it. Um, and then that allows me to set that up. So labeling is, is critical and that I do personally, I'll have, I'll have uh, the mag in the case, if it's an S by S card, for example, in the case, it'll be blank and then when I say uh, I'm receiving a card from the camera, uh, I have the camera assistants put a label on it. And that label will either be red tape or sometimes it's the camera. Um, some people like to do green tape as well. Like green is good and red is, bad, is hot or, for, or you know, do not format. Uh, but in most, most cases, I, I'll have one label tape that will go over the box. So now I'm, I'm receiving a, a, a mag with a roll number on it the case and a piece of tape over that. And then what that does is it does two things. Uh, on one side, it's labeling everything properly. I know exactly what this is. I know, I know what it looks like from the outside of the case. I know what it looks like when I pull open the mag and that's the mag and that's the number. All right, when you're on a feature, for example, you actually may have a media log, which I highly recommend. It just saves so much heartache and uh, headache from all that crap uh, in post um, that can happen. Communication tool, and that will have a mag number on it. So I'll even have maybe like a two letter or a four letter mag number on top of that. So if I, I have an issue with a mag, I can identify it, pull it out of the inventory and then test it separately. But now I have that labeled, going back to when I'm bringing it to my car, now I have that that tape over the, the mag, I can sit on it there, and now what I do is I pull off that tape, okay, that tape, and I put it right there in my car, A1. Normally, we have a specific way of labeling cards. Uh, a lot of people will put a blank piece of uh, white P-touch on a card, and then you will write the roll number on that label. So that way you know this roll is number A, 15 and you write it on there and then as it comes off the camera it has that roll number and then what I do when I download that card is I will go into Shotput Pro which is a program that downloads this one card onto multiple devices at the same time. At the end of the download a window pops up and I'll put the serial number of each card into the metadata file so you'll know that this card down from row A15 has this serial number 84559 and that will be in the metadata in a text file that's created from Shopput Pro so if you ever wanted to know what time and what card number that this role was on I have that material in a text file that's with all of my footage at any time. In case of a circumstance where a card goes bad then I'll know what camera roll number was on it and I'll be able to go and get that card and pull it out of the pool 
right away to make sure that we don't have another issue with that card. Because sometimes SBIOS cards or compact flash cards or SD cards can get funny and just screw up on you, and it happens. And you never know when, so you just have to be very careful that you've backed up everything and that you get that card out of the rotating pool as fast as possible and know how to identify which card it was. The, the camera assistants have a camera report, whether a tri-layer or a quad-layer uh, camera report, which may have multiple uh, bits of information. Usually it's scene numbers and takes. Uh, you may have the filter, the stop, something that you would traditionally have with film. Uh, and then that is handed off at the end of the day. Usually uh, it's white, white to editorial, uh, pink to um, production, yellow to camera, um, and if there's an additional pink, you know, to, I put that in like a case somewhere on the truck, you know, just a backup of a backup. Then, then if the assistant editor calls me or someone in the lab calls me, they say, hey, we're missing a care report for this. Then it's like, okay, you have that mag, right? Okay, cool. Here you go, and it's just handed off. It's just good to have a hard copy. You want to have a hard copy of something like that. And it's more so for the camera assistant to reference their notes later. So each, each camera on a set will have a specific color that's coded to it. A cam will be red, B cam will be blue, C cam will be yellow, and so on and so forth. And there'll be paper tape that is of that color that will correspond with it. So when either I give them the cards back or they give me the cards, it'll have a piece of paper tape of the correct color over the exposed end or on the top with the label of the number that it's supposed to be. What I do actually is um, when I print out a label for the hard drives that I'm delivering on a commercial, like I'll have, you know, four hard drives or something like that. I print out the P-Touch labels and because they always have like a little, little chunk on either left side or right side, I actually cut those off and that becomes my mag labels for um, all the mags that I use, whatever whatever camera we're using. It doesn't matter if it's Codex or, or RED or, or S by S or, or anything like that. I just use those same things. And that allows me to kind of get the most out of that P-Touch tape and I'm not just printing out chunks to do that. And then, you know, uh, I'm still gotta lab label the hard drives anyway. So now I'm doing double duty. Um, you know, everything when I'm working has to kind of do double duty to a certain extent. Uh, I may use the serial, I like to use the serial number that's actually already on the camera, already on that mag, because it's referenceable. I don't arbitrarily call it one or two, because that, there's nothing, that doesn't say anything other than what mag do you have in your hand? That's the most amount of information that you can conduct. I say the mag number, which is the serial number on there. And I only do that on features. Um, to identify bad media because this media, you know, it's gone through rental houses, it's been formatted, erased, wiped, gosh, 2,000 times. And unfortunately, there's a, a cycle of, uh, of formatting that you can actually um, have on the Mac. So, I mean, that's, that's also health, Mac health. If it'll be blank, you know, two inch by two inch square, and they'll write A1 on it, or sometimes I do, sometimes I pre. I hand off exactly, hey, this is, you know, I won't put the tape on there because that defeats the system, but I will put the roll number. I can put a blank on there. Oh, yeah, here's A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. You're going to be out doing car work all day. So here, just as long as you put these in order, you're fine. And it's easier for them to do. They can see on the outside. They put the mag on the camera. There you go, fast. So that's just blank until you put something on there or someone else marks it. Sometimes the camera, the second assistant, wants to handle it, wants to do it themselves. Sometimes they do it when they're reloading, sometimes they do it before they're reloading. It's just particular to whoever's using it, but uh, that's, that's the preferred method if we can, just for efficiency's sake and allows me to be fast, allows them to be fast, and all starts with camera department. Well, they have script notes, uh, and usually what I do is I pass along the camera reports from the uh, second assistant and I also pass along the script notes. And those are, uh, the camera reports are usually on a hard copy paper form, and the script notes are usually done on a card and handed off to me at the end of the night, and usually I'll get it from the script supervisor and lay it off where her, her files and time codes are matching 
the time codes of the media that's being handed off and also cross-referenced with the uh, camera reports. I always keep my, uh, my shot put pro as well as uh, for shooting ProRes, I'll actually keep the XML uh, file as well that the camera generates. And both of those allow me to kind of cover, cover my ass when post calls and I don't have the footage right there in front of me um, I'm on another job or I'm actually, you know, need to come up with an answer quickly, I can get to those logs um, quickly on my system and know, okay, I did download or, oh, they're found, uh, one of the files is corrupted. Okay, how does this corruption originate? Did it corrupt at the camera? Did it corrupt at my system? Did it corrupt at their system? There's a lot of possibilities. So having that log um, can verify that the download was good. Now, depending on who you're dealing with, uh, did they do a log on the way out? You know, so it's, it's in, or, uh, you know, did they do a check some on, did they check the drive that they're sending to post? Um, you know, there's also some wavelet uh, readers out there that, that'll read the wavelet compression of like red, for example, and tell you if it's, any frames are corrupted and tell you what frame it is. And you can kind of go and look, get a visual. I work with my utility in creating camera logs that will detail all of the cameras on the log sheet and what's been done as far as downloading to multiple drives, as far as transcoding, and as far as um, where we're at in the whole process. So you can look at this sheet of paper and know that role A1 has been downloaded and transcoded and, and put where it needs to be. And we can go down the list of every single roll number to make sure that we don't forget to download one roll into this hard drive or forget to transcode one roll into this hard drive. So we have a checkbox and we check it all off as we go. On the card, when I get it from the camera assistants, I take the piece of tape off. I put the piece of tape on my workbench then I take the card itself and write the roll number on it. Then I know that that card is exposed and that's the roll number that's on there. Then I know I slide that into my card reader, I transfer the data. Then I know if a card has a roll number on it that it's been exposed. So that's my system. Some people use a red tape and a green tape and this whole stuff. I just prefer to know what actual roll number is on that card. So if there's ever an issue, then I can go right to that card and say, here, roll 39, it's right here, it's in my hand. You know, instead of going, uh, which one is it, you know? So the roll number's written on the tape? It's written on the tape, on the card. Okay. Yeah, they'll put the piece of tape on the card. Some, depends on the camera assistant, I work with them. Uh, after a while, if you work with the same people all the time, you know how they like to do things and, and they, work with me a lot better. Uh, some people will label it before it goes into the camera. You know, some people label it with a piece of tape after they pull it out. Just depends on what the job is and if you're on that job for one day or if you're on that job for 10 months. You know, it depends. You have to be more flexible if it's just a, a day player situation versus being on a feature film for, you know, three, four months or something but uh, I work with some great teams. I mean, I can tell you actually due to myself in particular, I've in my entire career, I've only lost data twice. One was uh, on my very first job um, where uh, I had very first red feature. Um, we actually had to swap out mags to go into high speed mode. And I actually reformatted the mag that was on the camera. So that was my one. And then another time um, was uh, a mis mislabel and miscommunication at the end of the day where the camera assistant didn't put a label on it, handed my mag in a stack of mags that were to be returned. And I then took them the next morning, not knowing I had a card, not getting the camera report and taking those cards and formatting them in the camera the next day, losing basically the last shot of the day or last few shots of the day. And ever since then, it's been, and that was 2007, 2008. So um, the rest is just, it's all about labeling, 100%.
100%. You be on top of your labeling, you're fine. And then compartmentalize stuff. Put it in a bag, put it in a Pelican case, put it in something like that. I'm, I'm very, uh, I would say OCD in that respect. The camera uh, report itself has varied. Uh, traditionally, we used to get it from um, the lab and the lab would make them and then we would get them from the lab and what it is. But what's happening nowadays is you have company, you have camera assistants that like have their own or they got it from someone else and they'll have production make a carbon copy version of that. And it usually is, I say, you know, clip numbers are really important um, it, to have in partnership with the take numbers. Um, just giving that editor, that second assistant editor, or whoever's loading it into the Avid, the ability to type that information in and, and to see it and know that's what I'm looking at. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll tell you at the end of the day, and this is just a little side story, is um, I've, had a, I've had a camera assistant make a camera report. I've had sound department roll and have their own sound report. And everyone, for all intents and purposes, rolling. And then gotten a call two weeks later, we're missing a shot. Dane, you didn't download this. And I said, I don't download shots, I download rolls. So when I download something, it's not like I go in and just drag one shot over one by one. I do the whole roll. It's done all at once. And they're saying, no, we have that. We have the camera assistance report. We have the sound, uh, the sound file, hearing the clap stick. We have everything. And I said, no, I didn't. And then the production's like, no. And they got, the producer was getting very angry with me because he was very worried about this whole thing. This is the only thing that happened. He was, but, but it was with his multi-million dollar actors. And this was the shot that the director liked at six o'clock in the morning. I'm doing a 15 hour day or 16 hour day. And at someone, you know, had to get thrown under the bus. So they said, everyone was saying, it's the DIT, it's the DIT. Or in that case, it was the, I was the loader, but data manager. And I said, no, no, I swear, I promise I, I would download it every single shot. I know, I mean, I, you know, here, let me look and see. Lo and behold, I had to go in and find the actual log file that the camera creates saying when it turned on, when it turned off, how many frames it was. It's the internal software log of the camera. I actually had to get that and print it out showing that the camera on that clip only rolled for a second. And it's because, unfortunately, the camera, the first assistant double tapped. He went, it went, it was a red, so, you know, this could happen on a red. It turned like on for one second, one frame, they just went and he went and go. But operator, the director, VTR, camera assistant, second assistant, I wasn't there. I wasn't there on set. I was actually at the truck uh, about half a mile away. None of them knew uh, that that had happened, that they didn't roll. And at the end of the day, it was because of, I had to actually go through that whole entire step in order to prove myself. And then at that point, it's, okay, well, we're going to have to do a reshoot. We can't, you know get angry at the DIT or, or throw someone under the bus or, you know, bring out the blame police, you know? So the, it, it's, it's just stuff like that. You know, that's gonna happen. And that's why I think camera reports are really important. But at the end of the day, that camera report had no correlation to the footage whatsoever. And that's why I like metadata. That's why I like shooting on Airy Raw. I get an XML file. I get a, a CSV file saying everything with all the clips on there, everything, and I can access it instantly. And I don't even need to be looking at the footage to know what we rolled at. If we have smart lenses, what stop we are at, what, what the focal length was, everything. Now a camera report, just the camera system doesn't have enough time to do, you know? So we're still working, camera reports are critical, but in commercials, they don't use them at all. And I think it's actually a bad idea, but you know, less paperwork, you know, these companies, post houses have a lot of work, have a lot of stuff to go through. But there's a lot of miscommunication, unfortunately, in, in assistant editors in post uh, are usually dealing with multiple projects at once. 
you know, at once. Whereas on a movie, it's that's all they're doing, you know. So there's more aptitude for detail.